Hey guys, this is my 20th update of my Deep Blue Professional Rimless Tank. As you can see, uh, there's some changes uh, regarding fish, coral. I moved some things around. I always tinker with my tank. You might have seen some of those changes through my uh, last video regarding my equipment. But um, I want to first say I lost my tongue fish. Um, it just seeing my cleanup crew was picking at it in the uh, the dead carcass one morning and uh, maybe about three four days ago had them for about roughly about three months uh, again there was very little knowledge on there I actually contacted the wet web media crew because uh, Bob Fenner has a lot of experience with fish that are one popular or unpopular or rare that he has some knowledge on he mentioned that these things he was surprised it lasted a few more than a few days in my tank uh, because they're cool little fish. They actually stood small because there's so many varieties of them. Some get really big, like 15 inches or so. But he said most species stay small, but they're more an active eater at night. And it was just hard to get food to stay on the sand bed uh, because of the flow so he could eat. Because I know I saw him eat when I first got him, but... I couldn't keep track of him because sometimes when he's buried in the sand, you don't know where he is. Um, no one really bothered him. The only person really, well, person, but the fish that really bothered him was the butterfly fish when he came out of the sand. He would nip at the side of him because he didn't know what it was, but he didn't go after it after one little quick friendly nip just because he didn't know what it was. Uh, but that's the only stressor in the tank with him. Uh, all the other fish left him alone. But... Um, I don't think that was you know the demise of his death because it wasn't really constantly being picked on. Just uh, when he came out of the sand, the fish didn't know what it was. So uh, I guess it maybe might have starved. I, I have no idea. Could have been of old age. I don't know. Uh, again, there's very little information on these fish of lifespan and uh, how big they get and you know what they normally eat and what they do. But uh, from my observation, uh, it was a night feeder. Uh, but does move during the day in the morning. I thought he'll acclimate himself to the feeding time that I normally do with my other fish, but um, I guess not. So, uh, sorry, sorry to you know lose that fish. It was a really cool sand sifter type of uh, flounder-looking fish, but uh, very unique. And I don't think I'm gonna get you know maybe come across one of those again. Maybe be lucky down the road, but uh, I wouldn't count on it. Uh, as you can see in the middle of this uh, video here, I got uh, the Hell Freaky Firefish. Always love these guys, but since I have the net now, I'm not f worried about losing the fish from jumping, along with the Blue Dot Jawfish. As you can see here, the uh, Blue Dot just chilling, hanging out, and uh, enjoying that little crevice and home uh, that you see him right there. Uh, there's another addition of fish, and this is a fish I've been looking for two years. And it is so tiny, but it's the coolest uh, little goby out there, I think, with the colors. Uh, I actually do see it, uh, but I need a flashlight and a certain angle. But he hides in this hole here, which the jawfish creates. And actually, another entrance is over here, as we you can see the uh, yellow sponge. It's hard to see, but you need a flashlight to see him. And he's about less than an inch. He's about three quarters of an inch big. That's and and that's like almost max size for them. Uh, it's called the Flaying Prawn Gobi or Spike Fin Gobi or Gris and Jerry, I think if you could pronounce the uh, scientific name for it. Uh, if you look on, um, I would say, um, aquacon.com, they have a picture of him. Or if you just Google it, you'll see how awesome the colors on this little fish is. And uh, since my tank is really more of a, a passive tank, uh, took a chance plus you know it, it's so rare to even see him come in the market so and if they do come in the market people jump on it and I was shocked that this fish was actually advertised in a, a forum that no one jumped on him in three days and obviously I jumped on him when I saw it and uh, I got him for 60 bucks which normally uh, they're about a hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars depending you know when they do surface on the market uh, so I got a awesome deal on him and you know he, I didn't see him have to eat at the store I just said no I'm gonna put him in the bag it's like you know it's uh, you got to gamble at that point um, it's no sense to say oh I'll wait a few more days because obviously the opportunity probably uh, passed by so 
uh, unfortunately, you probably won't see them in this video because they are of a secret of rare, uh, rare, it's like a secret of Gobi, and that's why they don't service that much in the marketplace. And plus, they're so tiny, and a diver must be specialized to find these guys or just find them by accident. It's the only way. Um, I got this cool little uh, meat coral here. It has a nice color greens and like a yellowish color to it, so I thought that was pretty cool. That's actually got today on Father's Day. Uh, fish are doing good, as you see here with the clowns, the uh, flameback angel, the mandarin, my pair, my blue striped pie fish are doing great. Um, Royal Grand is doing wonderful. These uh, euphilia section that I have that is just constantly growing uh, in, in corals and I'm selecting. Uh, it's not fair rest right there. Um, I just, uh, they're doing very well. Uh, and uh, if you see here, I think my uh, clam here has pinch mantle disease. I do see some uh, sn pyramid snails, I believe they look like, but again, you have to look very closely because there's some that look like pyramid snails, but they're not. I didn't see anything on the scoots or shoots, whatever they call it, uh, but it's been like this. It's not fully extended. It is open. Uh, I'm just hoping it uh, survives, but I don't know. I have in a decent spot, and it hasn't moved since there. Um, I did get some of these little frags of hammer with a purple tip, green base. Uh, I got two of those right over there. I got up another uh, person, a reef tank person, who, uh, who advertised on their forum, and I jumped on them because so, they were cheap. And uh, actually, I got it from the same guy I got this frog spawn from. Sorry about the focus. I'm hitting the button up too many times to focus in and out. Uh, the Awesome thing about the Naoki Fairy Rash is that at, when the Tinnix come on, he does his flashing. The top part of his body actually uh, gets a little, little more white, and his black tail, it looks awesome. Like a, It shimmers the blue Atenic on his tail when he flashes. You can see if you just saw a little flash there, it had like a blue, blue tinge to it. And that's just awesome. It keeps his fin fully extended, swims around, does a little dance. Sometimes he jumps, and good thing I have this netting here. I don't want him jumping out. But uh, does that on a nightly basis almost. And it's just kind of strange because usually they do that when they're uh, advertising themselves to a female. But for some reason, uh, he likes doing it, so can't complain. I kind of like that action. Uh, my golden dwarf Morail is doing good right here, as you see. He still hasn't left this hole. He loves this hole. He hangs out here all day. Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, he would, He's definitely happy. He, I feed krill to him every night, and he uh, doesn't want to move. My other eel that I had before the other one jumped moved all over around the tank, including this hole he liked, but it moved into different holes. So we'll see what he does, but he's been there for months now, so I don't think he's, gonna, he's too happy there, I think. My marginal butterfly fish is doing very well. Um, cocoa worms are doing good. The... Purple sea fan hasn't really extended them because the jawfish kept them blowing sand on it, and I think it's just irritated the crap out of it. But believe it or not, I had jawfish in this, and in my other tank when I had this, and it did the same thing. So I think it'll, it'll survive. It's, I mean, I had it for over two, two and a half years now, so it should do okay. Uh, this coral right here, that I don't know, this is always covered by sand when I get home, so I don't know how well this is going to hold off. I don't think it's going to do that well. This rigid coral because of the sin, and it just irritates coral. I lost coral because the jawfish loved doing it, but I don't know. There's something about these blue dot jawfish that just, I don't know. You can let them get away with burger, I guess. Um, the tail spot blenny, doing very well. My blotchy's doing well as, uh, as well. The yellow sponge is still constantly growing in different areas of my tank, which is pretty awesome, along with the uh, blue. Rose bubble tip and anemone. It's just doing fantastic. It's like the watermelon color because it has the green around the base and it looks pretty cool with the tenix. My two sexy shrimp are just doing well and my uh, porcelain crab that's, I don't know, maybe underneath it or there he is. My porcelain crab there. So I got a couple things hosting this, this uh, rose bubble tip anatomy. I kind of slowed down the feedings of it. I was feeding it one krill a day. Now I've been doing it every other day because it got it to... Decent size where I wanted because I got it was really really small and wanted it to grow a little quick to stay in this little spot so uh, it's doing very very well. All the fish stay away from it knowing what it is. 
Uh, my Mandarin is doing so well, and uh, it's pretty cool. So that's pretty much of a quick update, uh, guys. You know, uh, my fish tank here. And uh, if you have any, again, if you have any questions about uh, you know what I do with my tank or any questions at all, I'll answer them. Or if you want me to make a video of something, like uh, I had a request for feeding and did the video on that, and also about my equipment and what I use, uh, I did a video on that recently as well. So, if you guys, have any uh, thing you want to know about or make a video about, I'll shoot one uh, or just just post some questions. Hope you guys are tanks are doing well and uh, happy reefing. That's awesome purple sponge right there.